guys, it's Nicole here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to make a response video to a video that a guy named Alex O'Connor made. He has a channel called Cosmic Skeptic and he talks about philosophy and a lot of different things that are super interesting and I've known his channel for quite a while and I've really liked it, but he actually made a video that was pretty different from his normal stuff and he titled it A Meat Eater's Case for Veganism. And I wanted to do a response video to this as a vegan just because I think in the vegan community we see a lot of people kind of bashing meat eaters, bashing people who aren't 100% vegan, bashing people for not doing it perfectly basically. But I had a different perspective. I think videos like Alex's are so necessary and so beneficial to this entire movement. And I have a few reasons for this mindset that I have. One of them is because when it comes to activism, we have a lot of jobs that we kind of have to do before we convince someone to go vegan. And it all starts out with basically showing them that eating animals is immoral in our society today. The next thing we try to do is educate people and show them that we don't need meat or animal products to survive or thrive. So you kind of get the moral aspect and the health aspect out of the way. And then the third thing that we try to do is help people transition to a plant-based diet. So show them recipes, show them meal ideas, show them alternatives to meat and dairy and eggs and all that stuff and basically bridge the gap or help transition them um, to a vegan or plant-based diet. And the thing with Cosmic Skeptic or Alex O'Connor is that he kind of did the first two things for us. He made a super good video talking about the philosophical and moral appeal of veganism and I wanted to go over his video with you. In Alex's video, he does say that for him, looking into veganism was more of an exploration. It wasn't like he had an agenda, and I actually find that very appealing, and I think that would relate to meat eaters more, because he's not coming at it from like a holier-than-thou perspective, or you know, acting like, I've already made the switch, I'm so much better than you, now you need to do what I tell you to do. His whole position was basically he thinks veganism is going to be the moral issue of our time, of this generation. And I kind of agree with him. I think it's really, really exciting to see more and more people taking an interest in veganism and focusing on morality. I think I'm such an advocate for self-reflection and basically kind of analyzing how we show up in the world and I think veganism is such an awesome way to raise your awareness and to care about the animals, the environment, your health, all of it. And he specifically in his video doesn't talk much about the slaughterhouse footage. Alex specifically says that the debate in his mind about veganism has been almost completely philosophical and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think a lot of vegans will try to do like their, this appeal to emotion and they'll show slaughterhouse footage and they'll cause people to make this gut decision to go vegan because they think that the footage of the animals being tortured is just so horrendous. However, that is actually not super effective in keeping people vegan from what I've seen. I know from firsthand experience, every single time I saw that footage, I was convinced to go vegan. They did not need to give me any more information. It was like, I don't want to participate in this animal cruelty. However, as time goes on, we live in a non-vegan world and it's so easy to go back to eating meat, to forget about the footage that you saw, to kind of just like numb it in your mind and um, almost ignore it. And so I think by Alex focusing on a philosophical argument and intellectualizing veganism, it's less of just like an emotional decision and it's a more logical decision, which will probably allow people to go vegan and stay vegan longer because it is more of a lifestyle change. And so, yes, again, I am very, very happy that he made this video. I should state I'm still not a vegan, but now whenever I consider the future of my diet, 
I can't help but imagine that animal products will one day no longer be a component of it. Albert Camus in The Myth of Sisyphus wrote, The principle can be established that for a man who does not cheat, what he believes to be true must determine his action. And it's in that vein that I realise that there can only be one of two outcomes for me. Either someone convinces me that the arguments I'm about to present are flawed, or at some point I'll just have to suck it up and join the growing trend of a herbivorous lifestyle. It's such a crazy perspective or position that Alex is in because he talks about basically the moral atrocities that he commits every single day when he eats a meal with animal products, and yet he's not vegan yet, he's not plant-based yet, and, and so it's a bit more relatable to meat eaters, I think, to watch this video because it doesn't feel like you're forcing something down anyone's throat. He's coming from the perspective of, I don't want to be right, I like the taste of meat, I want to keep eating it, but I don't think I can if these moral arguments I'm presenting don't have a good comeback. Alex also starts out his video by saying he's not going to be giving information about global warming or showing emotional slaughterhouse footage videos just because he's focused on the philosophical brain-based analytical type of reasoning that people do in philosophy and I liked that he mentioned that because I think it's important to note that yes I think the environment and global warming and the impact that animal agriculture has on that does sort of kind of relate to morality in a way like do we have a moral responsibility to care for the planet that we all live on and to give our children a planet that you know is livable but i understand that he can't put every single issue of veganism in this video so speaking of peter singer perhaps the most important animal ethicist of recent memory i think the main philosophical takeaway from his book which you should all definitely read by the way i'll leave a link in the description is this that the boundary we've constructed between human beings and other animals is completely arbitrary and almost entirely unjustified. He mentions a book called Animal Liberation by Peter Singer, and one of the quotes that he pulls from that book is basically this arbitrary distinction that we've made between humans and animals. And the really interesting thing is that when we talk about animals, we talk about the difference between oysters and chimpanzees, and they're still lumped in with animals even though us humans are much closer in relation to chimpanzees than a chimpanzee is to an oyster. And so this distinct difference that supposedly makes us so much better is almost non-existent. So one of the main arguments that meat eaters use is that humans are superior to animals because of X and therefore they are permitted to eat them. But there are some major problems that Alex discusses in his video. By what metric are we superior? Perhaps the only feasible answer to this is something along the lines of intelligence. Clearly, human beings possess a higher cognitive ability than, say, a chicken. But my question is this, what relevance does that hold to morality? Why should intelligence be the metric by which we measure moral worth? It's arbitrary, it means nothing in itself. Should we morally value human beings with higher intelligence over other humans with lower intelligence? I think not. But even if you do, we surely shouldn't value them to the extent that they should be able to mistreat, kill, and eat the less intelligent humans just because they think they taste nice. When you try to link intelligence to moral worth, you're going to get a huge array of problems because, you know, humans alone have different levels of IQ and have complete ranges of intelligence. and no one in their right mind would say that, you know, a very intelligent person has the right to turn a human upside down and slit the throat and eat them just because they did worse on the SATs than them. We're not looking for how we can judge what is most useful, but rather how we can judge what has more moral worth. And this can't be linked to intelligence. Trying to find a quality that a being can possess to justify them treating other beings who don't have that quality differently is known to philosophers as naming the trait, or as I'm presenting it, the name the trait argument. Essentially, the argument is that it's not possible to find the trait that non-human animals supposedly lack, that if a human were to lack, we'd treat the human how we currently treat the animals. For instance, you say we kill the animals because they don't have trait X that humans do have. And the argument is, if we found a human being who themselves lacked X, would we be justified in killing them? If the answer is no, 
then we haven't actually identified the trait that justifies killing animals at all. So when you go through all the different traits that you could supposedly fit into this box, none of them really seem to work. There isn't a specific trait or argument that justifies us killing animals, where if we found a human that had that same trait, we would also justify killing them as well. Basically, the conclusion is that it's a species thing. Because we are a different species than the animals, we feel like we have a moral superiority and we can do what we want to them. Another point that Alex made that I thought was super interesting is that he compares this argument that humans feel like we can eat non-human animals because we are a different species than them. However, he said, just comparing the difference in species is arbitrary and irrelevant and it's the same as basically comparing gender or sexual orientation or race. It doesn't make a difference when it comes to moral worth. But okay, so what about something like emotional intelligence, you might say? So apparently Alex explained that the second argument for meat eaters is that they tend to claim that humans can form connections that are deep and intimate and we can feel pain far superior than non-human animals can and we can fear our death or what happens in the future unlike animals. And so they are making this like huge distinction basically saying for a human to die it's tragic but for an animal to die it's not that big of a deal. Alex goes on to talk about the senses that animals have, like eagles have better eyesight than humans, or dogs have a better sense of smell than humans. Therefore, he concludes that because their senses are so much more heightened than us humans are, it's possible that their ability to feel pain is actually far superior than humans. Alex claims that intelligence is an arbitrary metric to determine moral worth, but the ability to feel pain is not. And so if there's even the possibility that animals can feel more pain than humans, then what are we doing to them? It's worth mediating on the counsel of Jeremy Bentham, who famously wrote of animals, the question is not can they reason, nor can they talk, but can they suffer? Why should the law refuse its protection to any sensitive being? Well? This reminds me of something that Alex touches on later in the video very briefly, but I feel like it's actually very, very huge to the topic. But he briefly mentions the difference that so many of us make between animals. Like, it's illegal to hurt a cat or a dog, but it's not illegal to hurt a cow or a pig or a chicken. And that to me seems extremely arbitrary and I don't know any good moral argument that would justify why we've picked certain animals to eat and certain animals to have as pets. If someone took a dog and turned it upside down and slit their throat and then cooked it for dinner and made dog stew, they would go to jail. But if they do it to a cow or a deer or a pig or any other animal that we have normalized as, you know, suitable to eat, then it's perfectly fine and it just seems like a very inconsistent law that we have. Why do we value dogs and cats over these other animals? There is no real moral difference. It's all based on societal norms. And if you think that's weird, you have a lot to think about. Another great point that Alex makes is that just even if you can say that animals feel less pain than humans, it doesn't mean they feel no pain at all. And Therefore, what moral justification do you have for causing them any pain unnecessarily? The third thing Alex talks about is an author named John Rawls who wrote a book called A Theory of Justice. And in that, they discuss an original position. And he gives this whole analogy that I find super effective where he basically says, imagine that you have a complete veil of ignorance. You're about to enter the world, but you have absolutely no idea who you're going to enter the world as. You could be a male, a female, gay, straight, bi, black, white, whatever. You could be anything. And so therefore, since you don't know what you will be entering the world as, it's in the best interest of everyone to make the most fair and most just society because obviously you're not going to make these horrible rules about certain people because you don't know if you're going to be that person or not. Basically, the argument was that this would create the most just society because every single person would be starting from this original position and wanting 
the most amount of equality for everyone. Of course, Alex takes this theory and extends it to not only animals, but everything in the universe. And he basically says, if you're about to enter the world and you don't know if you're going to be a brick, a human, a pig, or anything, would you still want the factory farming allowed in our world today as we know it? If you knew that there was a chance that you could enter the world as a chicken, as a pig, as a cow, as a deer, as any animal, or a human, just because you have that slight chance to be a human and enjoy the taste of meat, there is also a very, very decent chance that you could enter the world as an animal. And if that were the case, there's no way any logical person would allow the legal slaughter and murder and breeding animals into existence the way we know it because it's a life of slavery and torture. It's worth noting that philosophically speaking, the particles that construct your being really could have gone to anything else in the universe just as easily. So this isn't trivial. On the other hand, Alex says, you know, if you enter the world as a brick or a chair, you're not gonna care if they're using you to build a house or if someone's sitting on you because you're not a sentient being. You are an object and you won't even be able to know that you're here or not, so it won't matter. But obviously we can understand that animals are sentient beings, and so if we entered the world as them, we wouldn't want to suffer the way that they're currently suffering. Think of all the arguments you've ever heard in favor of meat eating, about humans being superior or worth more, or how some people need meat for strength, etc. Would any of these even tempt you to allow the meat industry uh, because you know that if you were born as a chicken, then your suffering would be worth their pleasure since they're superior beings as humans? It certainly wouldn't tempt me. So what are we doing here? I'll leave it to your consideration. On to the next point, and this is about equality between humans and animals. So Alex basically claims that it can be ridiculous to try to equate humans and animals. They're not equal and there are very, very strong differences between them in multiple ways. Alex goes on to talk about the different races and ethnicities and social groups and basically says just because there are noticeable differences between people doesn't mean that one has the moral right to do what they want to the other. That doesn't mean that they're not intrinsically valuable and worthy of freedom and happiness and a peaceful existence. We don't condemn racism because all races are equal. They're not. They look different. They have different proportions, skin colors and eye shapes and different cultures and different histories, different religions, different biology, and some data even suggests different IQ averages. But the whole point of racial justice is not to deny these differences but to point out that these differences are completely irrelevant to determining whether or not someone deserves life and freedom. So again, to answer the claim that it's ridiculous to see animals and humans as equals, Alex's point was that you don't have to. You don't have to see them as equal to recognize and understand that animals have moral worth and value. It might be more moral to kill chickens for food than to kill humans for food, but that doesn't make it actually moral to do either of these. It's more moral to just murder someone than to rape and murder them. But neither of these is moral. So even if we do see animals as having less moral worth than humans, this doesn't justify us treating them as though they have no moral worth at all. Another example that Alex pointed out that I'm so glad he mentioned because this example is just kind of so old at this point was the whole desert island scenario where if you're starving on a desert island and you have to pick between a human and a pig to kill and eat, which one would you kill and eat? Obviously people are gonna say the pig, oh my gosh, therefore you've just proven that, you know, pigs are less valuable than human beings and therefore justify us eating them or something along those lines. However, you don't have to kill either. That's just not the situation we're in. What if you were on desert island with a very old, frail person versus a young, vibrant, thriving person and you had to pick which human you were going to kill and eat to survive because you were dying. Just because you'd rather kill the elderly person than the youthful one because you think they have less moral worth doesn't justify us setting up a meat industry in the real world where we kill and eat the elderly, even if they are genuinely worth less morally. You can easily see a human as more valuable than a pig, 
but this alone doesn't justify killing and eating the pig. And finally, one of my absolute favorite points that Alex of Cosmic Skeptic makes is I would not have a hard time choosing whether to save a drowning sheep or a drowning human baby. But as I say, that's just not the situation we're in. It's more like choosing between saving a drowning sheep or giving a human child a piece of chocolate that it will enjoy. Which would you choose to do? Save the sheep or give the child the chocolate? I know what I'd do. I'd save the sheep. And I wouldn't save the sheep because I value the sheep more than I do the human. I'd save the sheep because I value its life over a transient moment of sensory pleasure for the human. It's not about whether we value animals as much as humans. It's about whether we value animals as much as human taste buds. So this whole discussion surrounding whether or not animals are of equal worth to human beings is a red herring, because the real contrast isn't between the life of animals and the life of humans, it's between the life of animals and the taste buds of humans. So in conclusion, after Alex gives this amazing argument for veganism, he then presents a challenge to his followers, and he says, if you can think of a moral justification for eating meat, for the factory farming industry that we currently know, then let me know. I think it's so beneficial and positive and good that this argument is coming from someone like him because he's gonna get people talking about this in the comments and even if they aren't vegan, even if they aren't eating a plant-based diet, we talked about this in one of my philosophy classes in college, which basically if we related to an argument, if we understood it and if we felt drawn to it in a way, we would simply say, I'm sympathetic to that argument. And the more and more people that are simply sympathetic to veganism and understand it and it's rational in their head and it makes sense, I think that is still a step in the right direction. And it's so much easier to help or assist or encourage someone to simply make slight changes in their diet like meatless Monday or cooking one vegan meal for dinner once or twice a week, those slight changes are gonna be so much easier to encourage people to implement in their daily lives if the base argument is already in their heads. And so, again, when you're trying to convince or encourage other people to go vegan, it's a step-by-step -step process. The more and more people in our society that don't just cringe when they hear the word vegan is a good thing. And to get people from his audience thinking about, you know, how to live a more moral lifestyle and putting veganism in their head is such an exciting and encouraging thing that I am so happy about. And again, I am such an advocate for all steps towards living a more compassionate lifestyle. So whatever steps you can make in the right direction is going to make a huge difference, not only in your health, not only in the lives of animals, not only in the planet, but in all of those things. So although it might seem kind of weird for a meat eater to make a case for veganism, I actually think it's a really awesome perspective and not one that should be like frowned upon. I don't want Alex or Cosmic Skeptic to get, you know, bashed for not being vegan yet because obviously the logic is there, the understanding is there, he's sympathetic towards veganism, and he knows eventually he's going to make the shift, but obviously I know from experience that it's a lifestyle change and it's not something that you can necessarily do overnight, at least not everyone can, so if he has to do it in his head first before he makes the change in his actual life, wherever you need to start, just start, and I think by Alex planting the seed in people's heads about why it is a morally good idea to shift to a more plant-based diet, to shift in that direction, I think that's going to make a positive ripple effect in the entire world. So I am so thankful that he made this video and I hope we see more meat eaters thinking about veganism and not just cringing at the idea but genuinely kind of being selfless and not looking at their own desires to eat meat or to just go with their taste buds, but to genuinely think about the entire issue as a whole, I think that's a good thing. Show me the quality that these beings lack, that if a human lacked, we'd shove such humans into tiny cages and grow them so fat that they're crippled by their own weight and forcibly impregnate them and remove the subsequent child and sell the mother to a slaughterhouse 
and you might have the ghost of a justification for eating meat. Besides that, I just don't see it. He also mentions a ton more in his video, so I will link his original video down below. If you want to go check that out, I think you will really enjoy it. Um, if you liked this video, please give it a like, share it if you want to, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. I love you so much, don't forget to love yourself. Bye.